Each day we see our numbers dwindle. Friends go out, but do not return. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at the 10 best Assassin's Creed DLCs. <laughs> For this list, we're looking at the best downloadable content from across the Assassin's Creed series. Which is your favorite mission in the Assassin's Creed franchise, DLC or otherwise? Let us know in the comments. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Fate of Atlantis, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The underworld is filled with kings, heroes, legends, all lost. The further along we move in the Assassin's Creed franchise, the more elaborate the DLC, and we're all in for it. In 2019, Ubisoft released the Fate of Atlantis DLC for Odyssey. It was a three-episode series consisting of Fields of Elysium, Torment of Hades, and Judgment of Atlantis. You can enhance three of your existing skills to become far more powerful. The player can enter the gates of Atlantis featured in the original game, and help lost souls encounter Poseidon and learn of the titular fate of the lost city. We won't reveal any spoilers, well, maybe just one. It was in the trailer, so not really a spoiler. You get to meet and battle Cerberus, which is definitely enough to make your three heads spin. Dead Kings, Assassin's Creed Unity. Is this who we killed for? Or was it all for someone else? A game. Unity is definitely an underrated gem in the Assassin's Creed world, perhaps due to its rocky start. It was delayed and saw some early technical difficulties, requiring a day one patch, which isn't a good look. However, despite a few shortfalls, the game is thoroughly enjoyable and the movement engine is superb. The first DLC release, Dead Kings, was actually offered for free by Ubisoft as a sort of apology for the early mishaps. A continuation of the original game's narrative, the DLC sees Arno Dorian track down a piece of Eden, and subsequently prevent it from reaching the greedy hands of Napoleon Bonaparte. It's nice to see Arno do his part to secure the artifact, much like his predecessors. Many have died. But if you survive, you will discover the secrets buried within our past. Legacy of the First Blade, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey saw more than one three-part DLC. Legacy of the First Blade preceded Fate of Atlantis in its release, the three episodes of which recount the first use of the famed Hidden Blade and also serves to continue the overarching story of the origins of the Assassin Brotherhood. Other than those important details, the DLC also covers a continuation of the Eagle Bearer's story, as he or she settles down and has a child, Elpidios. Elpidios is quickly put in harm's way, as this is Assassin's Creed, in all, this DLC has a nice story arc and allows the player to spend some more quality time with the Eagle Bearer. As long as they exist, we will never be safe. Send everyone. Wrath of the Druids, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. But it will take all its kingdoms to save it. Other dark-haired lords, there is but one move to make. Valhalla, much like many other titles in the franchise, has a lot of potential ground to cover when it comes to its historical period. The Vikings spread out and conquered many areas in their explorations. Wrath of the Druids recounts a Viking visit to Ireland and incorporates Celtic lore with the Children of Danu, a Druidic cult. The Children of Danu make the poison, but they also hold its cure. I pray the spirits guide you. The DLC continues on the format of the original game, as Eivor travels the Irish landscape gaining the favor of Gaelic royalty. Honestly, we're all for the continued use of that badass battle axe. Raven's <laughs> Freedom Cry, Assassin's Creed IV, Black Flag. The sooner Augustine's revolution comes, the sooner all slaves will live in peace. 
In many of the Assassin's Creed games, we encounter supporting characters of whom we'd love to get more insight. Freedom Cry allows us to spend some quality time with the Jackdaw's former first mate, Adewale. The DLC story covers the period between 1735 to 1737, which is just over 10 years after the events of Black Flag. The governor cannot continue like this. His death must bring this generation of warriors hope. They must not abandon the goal of independence. It's pretty much a standalone title and doesn't have anything to do with our old friend Edward Kenway, though it does provide small hints of the following title, Assassin's Creed Rogue, in which Adewale makes an appearance. Freedom Cry sees its protagonist attempting to take down the slave trade in the Caribbean, and it is awesome. The world will remember the cry for freedom. Jack the Ripper, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Smile and be polite, or I'll tell the Ripper where you sleep, my beauties. If history tells us anything, it's that everyone knows of or has heard of Jack the Ripper, despite us still not knowing his identity. Assassin's Creed puts its own twist on the legendary story, making Jack a member of the British Brotherhood of Assassins. In Ubisoft's version, Jack grows power-hungry and grows impatient with Jacob Fry's leadership role over street gang, the Rooks. Jack seizes power over the gang, yet still isn't satiated. His infamous murder spree, in which the real Ripper murdered a series of prostitutes in the Whitechapel district, comes in the form of this version of Jack murdering assassins disguised as ladies of the night. This one gets points for originality and creativity. Fix me! I am the solution. <laughs> the Da Vinci Disappearance. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Leonardo requests your presence. Lead on, Messere. If there's anything fans of Ezio's trilogy can say, it's that there's always room for more Da Vinci. The Da Vinci Disappearance was DLC for the fan favorite Brotherhood, and took place within the story in the original game, between sequences 8 and 9. In it, Ezio searches for Da Vinci's lost paintings, in order to find the entrance to the Temple of Pythagoras, or Pythagoras if you've played Odyssey. Of course you are familiar with Pythagoras. Remind me. Da Vinci has been kidnapped by a cult known as the Hermeticists, who desire the temple for themselves. Ezio comes to old friend Leonardo's rescue, and the player gets to spend some time on puzzles with the famed artist and innovator. Oh, what we wouldn't give for more Ezio, am I right? Hang on, old friend. I am coming. Dawn of Ragnarok, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Each day we see our numbers dwindle. The trains go out, they do not return. Valhalla has launched three expansion packs for its original title, and the third was Dawn of Ragnarok, released in March of 2022. Join Eivor as Odin in the mythological world, a glimpse of which was seen in the original game. As mentioned earlier, mythologies have countless avenues to explore, and Norse mythology is equally as rich in material. Eivor slash Odin travels the mythological landscape on a Viking adventure and quest to rescue Baldur, son of Odin. It's huge, ambitious, and beautiful, much like Ubisoft's past worlds. It of course contains the usual skins and outfit packs, as despite being assassins, let's face it, we're all fashionistas at heart. Looking good, Eivor. For Baldur, I would drain all nine realms. Curse of the Pharaohs, Assassin's Creed Origins. In the land of the undead. Not everything that is laid to rest. You know they couldn't let Origins go without some form of Egyptian tomb curse, right? Curse of the Pharaohs refers to the alleged real-life curses that befell archaeologists and grave desecrators of the actual past. In the DLC, Bayek of Siwa must track down the cause of angry spirits of deceased pharaohs that have been released upon the living world, an ancient relic owned by Isadora, God's wife of Amun. Even the dead seek justice. Darn those bad guys and their powerful relics. Are we right, assassins? Bayek travels to Thebes, which is ripe with exploration opportunities. Old crumbling tombs, anyone? The DLC is once again a visually stunning piece of art, and Bayek is always welcome on our consoles. This ends here. The Tyranny of King Washington, 
Assassin's Creed 3. After leading the American Revolution, George Washington resigned his presidency. Another three-part episodic DLC, which Ubisoft seems to be very fond of, Tyranny consists of the infamy, the betrayal, and the redemption. The story explores an alternate reality in which George Washington goes mad with power and becomes king. Connor in this reality has never become Connor Kenway and has never had any assassin training and is basically starting from zero skill-wise. What if power had corrupted him? He must build up his skills and strength in order to take down the tyrant King Washington. This DLC often gets buried in the hype of the newer games, but we think it definitely deserves to be checked out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.